Greetings, friends. David Marks here with an Adobe Lightroom Classic lesson for those of you who are just getting started with this complex program. Usually, when I record these video tutorials, I like to show you multiple ways to use each tool or feature. After a decade teaching Lightroom, though, there is one place where I believe we need absolute uniformity in our workflow. The place where I believe that we want to follow the exact same steps every single time is inside of Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classics Import Dialog. Fortunately, there's an easy way to do this if you learn to use an import preset. Without further ado, I'm going to jump over to my computer and let's get started. To get this lesson started, I'm going to show you the end results first so that you can see what we can accomplish with a bit of setup. And then I'll back up and show you each step in the import preset building process. To get things started, I have a memory card for my digital camera in my hand. And I already have a memory card reader connected to my computer. As soon as I pop this memory card into the card reader with Lightroom Classic running, the screen will automatically change to this. The window that you're looking at right now is Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic's import dialog. And in my opinion, there is no part of this program that causes more frustration than this screen. Fortunately, there is a feature in here that can take all the pain and suffering out of the import process. The most important feature, the one that today's tutorial is all about, is hidden away down here where it says import preset none. Since I've already set everything up to show you how easy life can be in this quick demo, all that I need to do is click right down here where it says none and then a flyout menu will appear. At the top of this menu, I'm going to choose the option that I created that says copy new photos from memory card to my photos go here folder. Clicking on this preset is like activating a macro or running a script that sets up all of the other buttons inside of this whole import dialog for me. With that one click, I can guarantee that every one of the little switches in here in all these overwhelming panels are all configured properly now. Since the import preset that I have built controls everything in this dialog, all that I need to do next is to tap on the import button in the bottom right corner. And in no time, Lightroom will begin to copy all of the images from this sample memory card over to my computer's hard drive and the import dialog will disappear. Now, to keep this demo moving, there were just a couple of images on this memory card. If there had been hundreds or thousands of additional photos, then the copying phase of the import process would take a bit longer, but nothing else would change in my workflow. Now that these demo images have been added into my Lightroom catalog, let me go off on a tangent and show you a few of the wonderful things that this import preset also did for me. First, I'm gonna click down here to open up the metadata panel. If you look down here in the middle of this panel, you can see that my name now appears in the copyright box and that the copyright status of this image is currently set to copyrighted. This valuable information appears here because the import preset told Lightroom Classic to automatically mark every one of the photos that I import with this info as they're copied over to my hard drive. Next, if you look up here in the center left top of the screen, then you can see this image as file name. The name that you're seeing for this image is no accident. This file's name and the name of all the other images that I just imported was also set automatically by that import preset. If you're wondering, a good file name, in my opinion, needs to start with something like your initials or a combo of your first and last name. In my case, that's the D marks part of this long string. Next, a good file name for a digital image must include the year, the month, and the date that this image was shot. When I slide over to another image from a different day, then you can see how that part, the center part of my file's name, automatically changes from day to day, from month to month, and year to year. The reason why I have things set up this way is that I can immediately tell what folder this image lives in. Let me demonstrate so you can see how easy this makes things. If I click over here to open up Lightroom's folders panel, and next I click here inside the new folder search bar. Now I'm gonna type in that year month day string from the center of this file's file name. So in this case, 2019-06-27, and at the bottom of this list, I click here, 
there's all the files I shot that day. Bam. In absolutely no time, I found my way into the folder that contains this image and all of the others from this particular day of shooting. When your file names and folder names are consistent, finding where your images live is this fast and easy, even if your catalog contains tens of thousands of photos. So now that you've seen some of the good things that an import preset can do for you, let's talk about how to build one. To teach you how to build the exact same import preset that I just used in this demo, I'm gonna reset everything so it's as if I was working with a completely blank, brand new Lightroom catalog. Hang on a second while I switch things around here. Okay, step one, if you're starting from scratch, is to build a metadata preset that includes your basic copyright and contact info. Fortunately, you can do this step even if your Lightroom catalog is completely empty. To build a metadata preset, go up to the menu bar at the top of your screen and then over to the word metadata. When this flyout menu appears, choose the one in the middle that says edit metadata presets. When this big dialog box appears, come down to the very bottom and click on the check none button first. Next, tap on the little arrows if needed to open up the IPTC copyright and the IPTC creator sections. Now, think of this screen like a rubber stamp or an address label that we're going to create. In here, only the fields that we fill out and that have check marks beside them will be saved into our rubber stamp. So for this project, we'll want to fill in the most generic fields, like your copyright info, stuff that can apply to every image only. I know that this is not exciting, but if you fill in a couple of these boxes now, then you will never have to do this again while you're using Lightroom Classic. So I'm gonna start with the copyright box. Next, I'm gonna set the copyright status option to copyrighted. Next, the lawyers tell me that it's a good idea to type the words all rights reserved in the rights usage terms box while we're in here. Finally, if you have a website, then please type in your website's URL, complete with the HTTP stuff. If you want to add your email address in here, that's fine too. Now, to be clear, nothing that you type in here is etched in stone, so we can always add in something like a website later if needed. But please, take your time if you're playing along with me and make sure that you spelled everything correctly. When you're happy, Tap on the Done button at the bottom of this window. When you press Done, a dialog box like this one should appear. In here, choose Save As to save this as a new preset. And now we need to give our metadata preset a meaningful name. Something like My Copyright Info will do fine for this. OK, so now we're done with step one. To do the next step, you'll need to pop a memory card into a card reader or connect your digital camera to your computer. I happen to have another memory card handy, which I'll pop into my card reader right now. When the import dialog opens, you should see something like this. By the way, if Lightroom Classics import dialog does not automatically appear when you insert a memory card or attach your camera, then you should probably go to your preferences menu, which PC folks you'll find under the word edit. And in here, in the general tab, Check on this switch, the one that says show import dialog when a memory card is detected. If this guy's turned on, then this box ought to automatically appear. I'm going to close this for now. So back here in the import dialog, I'm going to work my way across the screen from left to right and from top to bottom. Starting in the upper left corner of this dialog, hopefully your screen will show something like this symbol, which is supposed to represent a memory card or a card reader. Working our way down the left-hand panel, let's make sure that the Eject After Import option and the Include Subfolders choice are indeed active, meaning they have little check marks next to them. Next, up here at the very top of the screen, let's choose either the Copy as DNG or the Copy option. If you're curious, I have a lengthy tutorial elsewhere on what DNG conversion means and its advantages and disadvantages for Lightroom users. Since DNG conversion is a choice, though, that we can always make later in life 
And since it's not always a good idea, I'm gonna leave this one set to copy for now. Next, we need to focus on the box over here where it says two. Of all the choices that one can make in Lightroom, this one is perhaps the most important. When you click here, a drop-down menu is going to appear. At the top of this list are three sample locations where someone might wanna keep their digital images. Unfortunately, none of these choices are good enough, so we must click on the option that says Other Destination. When you do this, a window is going to appear. In here, we need to guide Lightroom to the Photos Go In Here folder that you have already created for your long-term image storage on a properly formatted, fast, high-quality hard drive. If you already have a top-level image storage folder, like the one that I use in all my videos called Photos Go Here, then please guide this dialog to that folder's location. If you're absolutely brand new here, and if you have yet to create this kind of top-level storage folder, then please guide this dialog over to the hard drive where you want all of your images to live, and then click on the New Folders button at the bottom. Windows users, your New Folders button is up at the top of this dialog, but the exact same advice applies for you. For this demo, I'm gonna guide this dialog over to the Pictures folder, the one that lives inside my computer's internal hard drive. And then I'm gonna choose this Photos Go Here folder. Again, if you don't have one, please create one at this point. Next, I'll click on the Choose button. So this folder, this Photos Go In Here folder, will become the root storage location for all of my digital images forevermore. I cannot stress enough how important that step is. If you are unsure about which hard drive to use or where to store all of your digital images, then please stop here, check out my in-depth tutorial on all of your image storage options with Lightroom Classic. Anyway, since I'm sure that using my computer's internal hard drive will do me no harm today, I'm going to proceed to the file handling tab at the top of the right-hand panel. In here, I'm going to set the build previews option to standard. Next. I'm gonna enable the Build Smart Previews choice, and then I'm going to enable the Don't Import Suspected Duplicates options. I am not going to turn on the Make a Second Copy option, since it does not do anything like what you think it should do. If you believe that this Make a Second Copy switch is a solid backup plan for your photography, then you are sadly mistaken. Fear not, though. I have an extensive tutorial on how to build robust backups elsewhere for both Mac and PC users. Next, I'm gonna leave the Add to Collection option turned off. Now, I love collections, and I rave about them in many of my tutorials on how to organize your images, but this choice does not belong in our generic import from a memory card template. Okay, in the next tab down, where it says File Renaming, I'm going to click here to enable the Rename Files button. Then, once this switch is active, I'm gonna click here beside the word template. At the bottom of this list, you'll find one that says edit. Pick that one. This will open up the file name template editor. Now I know that this box looks a little different on a PC, but have no fear. In here, please delete whatever it currently says in the big box at the top. Next, type your initials or whatever short personal identifier you wanna use for the beginning of your file's names. Next, I'm gonna add a dash, but no blank spaces. And then I'm gonna come down here where it says date and click. Clicking right here will bring up a flyout menu where you can find an option that says date Y, 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 Y. Y, 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 Y here means a four digit number string for the year that Lightroom will read from your digital camera's timestamp. Pick that one and then hit the insert button to the right. Next. Let's add another dash, but no blank spaces, please. And then let's return to this menu here again. This time, let's pick the one that says month, MM, so that we'll get two digits for the month. If needed, tap the insert button again, then add another dash. Next, I'm gonna come back down to this menu, and I'm gonna pick the one that says date, DD, so that we'll also get two digits for the day of capture. Finally, I'm gonna add one more dash, 
And then I'm going to click up here in this box up near the top where it says file name right now. And I'm going to choose the one that says file name number suffix. Once we have that one in, we are set. Now we have a great file naming template. Building this was a bunch of steps though. So now we need to go up to the top where it currently says custom and click there so that a menu appears. At the bottom of this menu, choose the one that says save current settings as new preset. And I like to give this one an obvious name. Something like my file name will do just fine. Once it's got a name, you can hit create and then we can hit done. Now I'll know this is working if it now says template my file name and there's even a little sample of what it'll do down here. Next, in the apply during import tab where it says develop settings, leave that one set to none. Leave that one off. But where it says metadata none, click there and choose the copyright template that we created way back in step one. Finally, down here in the destination tab, please do not turn on, do not enable the one that says into subfolder. That will only cause you frustration. Instead, click here where it says organize by and pick the one in the middle that says by date. Finally, choose the second option from the top inside of the date format menu dropdown. Trust me, the one that says the year as four digits, then a slash, and then the year, month, day, all with numbers and hyphens is the one that we want to use. Now, to save all of this setup work so that you never ever have to configure any of these settings again, please, Click down here on the tiny little word none at the bottom of the screen. When you do this, a menu will appear where you can choose the option that says save current settings as new preset. Now I like to give this one a really long and explicit name so that I know exactly what it does. For the name of this import preset, I'm going to type copy new photos from memory card to photos go here folder. Once you've given this one a meaningful name, we're done. As long as you activate this template every single time when you pop a memory card in or connect your camera to your computer, and then you hit that import button over there on the far right, you will be happy. Do this every time and you will never have images with lousy file names or no copyright information. If you use this template card after card, then your images will never wind up in the wrong folder or on the wrong hard drive. It took a lot of setup, but the payoff for all this effort is enormous. Now, I wish that the import preset that we just built was sticky. But alas, I need to warn you to check on this preset, make sure it's active with every single card and every import. I can't explain why, but your import preset will be active for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then all of a sudden, one day, for no good reason, Lightroom Classic will default back to none. If you make it a habit to check on this setting every time, then you'll catch that change and all of your imports will be perfect. But if you don't use this kind of preset, and if you don't check on it with every single memory card, then who knows where your new photos are gonna go or what they will be called. Well, there you go. I know that was a lot of steps, but trust me. If you use the import preset that we just built, every time that you need to bring in new images from a memory card, then your Lightroom life will be good. If you go rogue here though, and try to invent some other system, then I cannot guarantee that all of your imports will go well, or that you're ever gonna be happy working with Lightroom Classic. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.